Hello folks, my name is Doug Fisher and I'm here today to talk about a few fish that are often overlooked by anglers in Pennsylvania. These five fish present either a unique angling experience or overlooked table fare, or possibly both. Targeting these fish could be a good chance to chase something new. The long-nosed gar is a bit of a toothy novelty in Pennsylvania. Like the pikes, gars are torpedo-shaped and they have their medial fins located pretty far back on their body. This makes them outstanding ambush predators. The long-nosed gar inhabits lakes, backwaters, and sluggish flowing waters. It is a primitive fish covered in rigid, armor-like scales. It is capable of breathing air, which is accomplished by gulping atmospheric air at the water surface. This allows them to remain in waters with high temperatures and low dissolved oxygen. Their diet consists almost exclusively of fish. There is no state record here, due in part to its prior listing as a candidate species. The world record is 44 pounds. This can be a large fish, but in Pennsylvania, it is generally moderately sized. Historically, the long-nosed gar has been documented in our major rivers, but pollution and habitat modification has reduced its current range. It is recovered in Western Pennsylvania and occurs occasionally in the Susquehanna. It's extirpated in the Delaware. It is also common in Lake Erie in suitable habitat. The best waters to target long-nosed gar in Pennsylvania are the Ohio, Monongahela, and Lower Allegheny Rivers, Presque Isle Bay, and Conneaut Creek. In Presque Isle Bay, there's also another gar species present, the spotted gar. The spotted gar is an endangered species in Pennsylvania, and efforts to distinguish long-nosed gar from spotted gar should be made by anglers targeting gars. The angling season for long-nosed gar is open year-round. However, the best time is definitely in the spring and the summer. Long-nosed gar are usually not too far from the surface, so sight fishing can be effective. Gars can be caught on hooks, but due to the bony structure of their jaws, this can be difficult. A good tip here would be to make your own nylon rope lures. This is nothing more than a, a, a roughly six inch section of rope that's been un, unraveled and then attached to a fly, jig, or possibly a spinner. The rope then becomes entangled in the teeth and the jaws of the, the gar after a strike, and the entanglement allows you to reel the fish in. You definitely need a pair of pliers to remove the lure from the jaws, and a pair of gloves would be wise given the, the rigid uh, armor-like structure or the scales. When the fish thrashes back and forth, it can almost have a scissor action on your skin. The bowfin is another primitive predator and is also generally considered a rough fish like the long-nosed gar. The long banner-like dorsal fin is a key identifying characteristic, as is the ocella spot on the upper portion of the tail fin of the males. Each nostril has an obvious barbel-like filament that protrudes from the nose. The bowfin's preferred habitat is very similar to that of the long-nosed gar. It is also able to gulp atmospheric air. Unlike gar, bowfin have a stout body with elasmoid scales which actually flex and are not armor-like. Breeding males develop lime green fins as seen in this picture. The diet of adults is largely dominated by fish and to some degree cray crayfish. Like the long-nosed gar, there is no state record for the bowfin, due in part to its prior listing as a candidate species. The world record is 21 pounds, 8 ounces. Specimens of 24 inches are not uncommon in Pennsylvania, and I would consider it to be a moderate to large fish here. Bowfin are native to the Lake Erie and Ohio River drainages in Pennsylvania. They're introduced elsewhere. Since the early 2000s, their distribution in the Ohio River drainage has been expanding. There are many waters in Western Pennsylvania where bowfin can be caught. Standouts would be Conneaut Lake, Pimatuming Reservoir, Presque Isle Bay, Conneaut Marsh, and French Creek. In central Pennsylvania, there are a handful of introduced populations that provide opportunities, although those populations probably aren't as abundant. Those would be Black Bashannon Lake, Lake Marburg, and Glendale Lake. The angling season for bowfin is open year-round. However, again, the, the best times are probably in the spring and summer. Target heavily vegetated areas, and the use of live bait could certainly increase your odds. Cane poles can be used to drop the bait into open areas uh, among weeds or along their edges. You can also try to utilize largemouth bass style lures. 
This fish is a bulldog of a predator and is usually not very picky. Sometimes called the Pennsylvania bonefish, the fall fish is the largest native minnow found in Pennsylvania. The fall fish is an inhabitant of medium creeks to large rivers. They spawn in the spring and construct large pebble nests. These can be distinctively seen later in the summer when the water levels drop. The fall fish is an aggressive predator and is not finicky, finicky about chasing lures. There is no state record in Pennsylvania and the world record is three pounds, nine ounces. Fall fish are found throughout the Atlantic slope in streams with moderate gradients and decent flow. These would include the Susquehanna, Delaware, and Potomac River drainages. The fall fish is so widespread on the Atlantic slope that it's hard to pick one water as being exceptionally better than any of the others. For an angler looking for an opportunity, the following waters would probably be a good place to start. The Susquehanna River and its tributary Pine Creek, Potomac River and its tributary Maconakajig Creek, and the Delaware River in eastern PA. The angling season for fall fish is open year round. Anglers should seek out clear waters with gravel or shoal areas. The presence of nest mounds are a clear giveaway that fall fish are in the area. These nests can be pretty large, up to, up to about three feet in diameter. Smallmouth bass tactics will also work for fall fish. The use of spinners, flies, small twisters, and surface poppers, especially when there's a hatch coming off. The burbot is the only freshwater representative of the cod family. At first glance, it looks like an odd cross between an eel and a catfish. It has two dorsal fins, one short and one long. The anal fin is also long. A long barbel protrudes from the center of its lower jaw. Its scales are small, like those of a trout, and the body is covered in a thick slime. It has many correspondingly odd common names. Names like lawyer, ling, eel pout, and poor man's lobster. This is a cold water species that prefers lakes or slow moving sections of streams or rivers. It is nocturnal and resides on the bottom often hiding under some form of cover. The burbot is a winter spawner. The diet of adults is dominated by fish and crayfish. Although it is still relatively common in the eastern basin of Lake Erie, there is concern that the burbot may be in need of conserva conservation measures in the future. There is currently no state record for the burbot and the world record is 25 pounds, two ounces. The burbot has a whole Arctic distribution and can be found in northern Eurasia and North America. In Pennsylvania, the fishable population can be found in Lake Erie, but there, is all, there are also populations in sections of the Allegheny and Susquehanna rivers in Pennsylvania or New York. These populations are endangered and they have been thought to be taxonomically distinct from, from burbot in Lake Erie, but the scientific investigations have not been fully completed to date. The best place to target burbot in Pennsylvania is Lake Erie and in particular Presque Isle Bay. The angling season for burbot is open year round. There's even a special summer season for scuba divers that want to spear burbot. In the winter, burbot move into shallow water to spawn. Presque Isle Bay is a prime location and burbot can be caught through the ice or from shore or piers using live bait. A good tip here for burbot is to chunk up the fillets, boil them in salt water, and dip them in butter. This is where they got the name Poor Man's Lobster. It's excellent. The white bass looks very similar to the striped bass, but it does not grow nearly as large and has different native waters. The white bass has two dorsal fins and well-developed stripes along its silvery sides. However, it has a single united tooth patch on the rear of the tongue, unlike the striped bass, which has two. The white bass inhabits lakes and large rivers and is often found in large schools. It is a spring and early summer spawner and the diet of white bass largely consists of fish but macroinvertebrates are also consumed by adults. The Pennsylvania state record white bass was four pounds and it was caught in Conneaut Lake. World record is six pounds, 13 ounces. The white bass occurs widely in Lake Erie and in the Monongahela, Lower Allegheny, and Ohio rivers. There are lots of waters in western Pennsylvania for an angler to target white bass. Lake Erie and Conneaut Lake, the Ohio, Monongahela, and Lower Allegheny rivers are standouts.
The angling season for white bass is open year-round. The best times are probably the spring and the summer. White bass run upstream to spawn in the spring. Anglers should target areas below dams and near shore areas of lakes. Anglers should also keep an eye out for schools of bait fish that are attempting to evade predators. It is common for white bass to feed in packs by corralling prey. Casting into the mix can be productive. Thanks for listening, folks. I hope some of this info has piqued your interest. I also hope there is a trip to a new water and new additions to your catch list in the future.